Welcome to the Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel paper. This question here is about this plan view of a frame for a flat roof. Sorry about that, this is annoying. The shape of the frame consists of a triangle ABD joined to a triangle BCD. Okay. Um, given that BD equals X, I've got this diagram here, so I have to keep on scrolling up and down. BD equals X meters, CD equals 1 plus X meters, BC equals 5 meters, angle at BCD equals theta degrees. Show that the cosine of theta degrees is given by this expression, 13 plus X over 5 plus 5X. So here we have a triangle, which is not a right angle triangle, and we have three sides given in terms of x some of them and we have to show that the cosine of this angle is given by this so obviously it seems like quite obvious that we're going to have to use the cosine rule the cosine rule being that the cosine of the angle a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc and something like this should not be remembered um, by the letters but rather by the concept so for example if this is angle a Okay, this is A, B, C. This is angle A. And we want to find this angle. We need to have this side over there. All right, so forget about A, B, C. You can call it anything you want. P, Q, R, X, Y, Z, whatever. It doesn't matter about the letters. It doesn't matter about the letters. It matters about the concept. So I'm trying to find this angle here. Then this is the side that must be in place of the A in my formula. So it's going to be this, this squared plus that squared minus that squared over two times this times that. If I'm trying to find this angle, then this will be the side opposite. This will be the side on the in the place of the uh, the a here. This will be this this side squared plus that side squared minus this side squared over two times these two multiplied. So that the concept is important, not the letters in the formula. So in in this case, we want to express cosine theta. So this will be these two will be in the place of the b and c, and this will be in the place of the a in my for, in my formula. So I don't like to memorize the cosine rule by the formula, uh, you know, the letters of the formula, rather than the concept, okay? The concept is what's important. So we can say here that the cosine of theta is equal to, you take the two sides beside it, you have five squared plus one plus x squared, in brackets, minus the side opposite, which is x squared, over two times b times c, so it's two times five times one plus x. Okay, so hopefully this will simplify to exactly what we have here. Let's see what happens. So cosine theta equals, that's 25 plus, and you're going to have 1 plus, you, you, to square this bracket, you square the first term, that gives you 1. You multiply the two terms together and double the answer, that's going to be 1x times 2, 2x. And you square the last term, that's going to be plus x squared, and you have a minus x squared. So the good, the good thing is the x squared looks like they're going to be cancelled out, so it looks like we're on the right tracks. And this gives you five, 2 times 5, which is 10. In fact, I'm going to leave this as 10 times 1 plus x for now, because um, we'll see if anything cancels out. Leave it like this first, and then cancel out, and then expand at the end if necessary. So here, x squared cancels with x squared. you got 25 plus 1, which is 26. So that's 26 plus x over 10 times 1 plus x. All right, 26 plus 2x, sorry. What am I doing? 26 plus 2x over 10 plus 10, uh, 10 over 1 plus x. So we can say cosine theta is equal to, there's a common factor of 2 on the numerator, so 2 times 13 plus x over 10 times 1 plus 1 plus x. The 2 cancels with the 10, giving you 5 underneath, so you're left with 13 plus x over 5 times 1, which is 5, and 5 times x, which is 5x, and that's exactly what we had to show. Okay, 13 plus x over 5 plus 5x. So we've shown that using the cosine rule, pretty simple. Now we're going to go on to part b. It says, given also that x is equal to 2 root 3, so they've given us some numbers here. So this x is 2 root 3, and angle BAC is 30. B, A, C, this angle is 30. Now, I'm sure that many students didn't read it properly and assumed that they were giving that value of the angle theta. 
which would then would, of course, mess up the rest of the question. So be very careful in these type of questions to read it very, very carefully. Because one little slip like that can cost you so much time in, a, in, a, in an easy question and, you know, can cost you, you know, it's the difference between A and a B, you know, so, so, you know, you don't want to be, you know, and, and because of that, you could waste so much time that you miss out on doing other questions, right? And it could have a domino effect on your exam. So always, always read very carefully, angle B, A, C, B, A, C, this angle. It's not the theta that they, they've marked here. I'm sure if I look at the examiner's report, that that will be the case, that many students would have written in this place 30 and that would have messed up the question. All right, so now they told us also that ADC is a straight line. Okay, so now if this is 2 root 3 and that's x, this is 1 plus 2 root 3. So we can replace this with 1 plus 2 root 3. That's this, this length here. And that's 2 root 3. So we have some length, actual length. We have this angle. Okay, now because we have already got this from the earlier part of the question, we don't have to bother using the cosine rule again. We can use this. We know that the cosine of theta will be given by this relationship here. Okay, so now we know cosine theta is 13 plus x over 5 plus 5x. We can then say, all right, that means the cosine of theta is equal to 13 plus what's x? 2 root 3 over 5 plus 2 times, sorry, 5 plus 5 times 2 root 3. 5 plus 5 times 2 root 3. Let me just write that properly like this. 5 plus 5 times 2 root 3. So we can say, therefore, that cosine theta is equal to 13 plus 2 root 3 over 5 plus 10 root 3. So then theta is equal to the inverse cosine of all of that. So we take a calculator. Once to open. And we put in these values. So inverse, cosine, are we in degree mode? Yes, we are. Fraction, we have 13 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, over 5 plus 10 times the square root of 3. And that gives us our answer, which is 42.471. 42.471. What I can also do in case I need it later, I can store this in my calculator as A. So I've got to put here that this is A in my calculator. So I understand that. Now, that is the angle in this place over here. 42.471. Okay, so now we know this angle, we know that angle, we know this length, we know that length. We have to find the area of triangle ABC in meter squared, giving your answer to one decimal place. So what strategy should I employ here? Well, um, we know that the area of a triangle is given by a half times AB times sine C, where A and B are two sides and C is the angle between them. Now, seeing as I already have this side, and I know this angle now, if I can find the length from A to C, that would be good enough for me to find the area of this triangle. Now, there's probably lots of ways of doing this question, to be honest. You could use find the area of this triangle straight away now and then add the area of that triangle if you find some more lengths here which you probably can do quite easily right but i think the easiest way if we just find this length here we can find the area of the whole triangle just in one go now the key is how do we find the length here the length ac well i know this angle i know this angle i can find this angle okay the angle abc so let's do that first so i can say that the angle a BC is 180 minus the sum of the other two angles, which are 30 plus 42.471. 32 plus 42.471. All right, so I'm going to take this answer. I'm going to add 30 to it. Okay, and I'm going to do 180 minus that answer. Oops, 180 minus that answer. And that gives me 107.529. 107.529 degrees. Notice how I'm, I'm writing things to a higher degree of accuracy than we need so that we're showing the examiner we are keeping accuracy. And I'm actually using the calculator value when I am doing my calculations. So I know this angle. In case I need to use this angle again, I'm going to store this angle as B. So this is now B in my calculator. So this is A, this is B, my calculator. So I can refer back to them when I need them. Okay, now... 
Because now I have this angle, and I'm trying to find this side, AC, I have this angle and I know this side, I can think of this you know, triangle as follows. I've got this triangle that looks something like this. I'm just doing it freehand. This is 30 degrees. This is 107 point whatever degrees. This is 5 centimeters. I want to find this side. So I can use a sine rule. I have a pair of opposites I know and a pair of opposites, one unknown. So I can say x over the sine of 107, 107.529 is equal to 5 over the sine of 30 degrees. So we can say x is equal to 5 times the sine of 107.529 divided by the sine of 30. And that's going to give me x, which I'm going to call it, um, that's going to be the side, I'm not going to call it x, because there's already an x in our question, so I don't want to call it x, that would be silly. So I'm going to call it, um, AC, should really call it AC. This is AC, so I'm going to call it AC. Okay, don't call it X. When there's already an X in your question that refers to something else. Okay, so that will give me the length of AC. So I'm going to have now, I have five times, oh, five times, it's my fraction button, the sine of what I stored as B. Okay, so alpha B. Okay divided by um, the sine of 30. Okay, so that should give me my answer. That's 9.5356, and I'm going to store that as C. So 9.5356. So AC is equal to 9.5356. Let me make sure. 9.5356, okay, good. Okay, so that's the length AC, 9.5356. I know this angle already is 42 point something, was it? 42.471. Now I can use my area and finally get to the answer. So the area is equal to a half A, B, sine C. That's the formula, which is a half times the two sides, which is a half times five times 9.5356 times the sine of 42 point, 42.471. So I can't even read, read my writing. Okay, so that should give me the area. The area. So let's put this in the calculator. So we have um, a half, 0.5 times 5. Okay, times. This was stored as C. So I'll put alpha C, okay, times the sine of the angle which we stored as A, alpha A, okay, and that gives me my answer, 16.096, 16.096, which we round, as they asked us to do so, to one decimal place. Okay, so normally we would round to 3SF, which actually would be the same thing. Okay, so it's 16.1 centimeters squared. That's the area of this triangle. I think that's the easiest way to do it in one step. You could do it by finding the area of this triangle and then finding the, the angles in this triangle and finding the area in this triangle as well. But I think this is the easiest way. So that concludes question number five. I hope that was clear. Other questions um, from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the area over here on the top of the screen. Other questions from the topic of, um, I guess, trigonometry can be found in the playlist over here from P1. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this, li on this link. And you can watch the video here, which will take you to, or show you how to use my uh, channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.